Hey everyone, God bless you and thank you for tuning in. I've prepared a word for you today uh, that I've entitled Church Schools and the Future of the Church. Church Schools and the Future of the Church. I'd like to reflect a little bit about the incredible importance of Christian education and what the saints say uh, about the necessity of having church education uh, instead of secular education. <coughs> I've amassed a number of uh, inspiring texts uh, from our fathers over the centuries to kind of guide us, uh, as is my custom. I'd like to start with a quote from uh, the great St. John of Sinai, of course, the master of the spiritual life, and from his ladder of divine ascent on the subject of the danger of godless schools. So just imagine he's writing about the typical public school today in America. For those of you who are outside America watching this, if you have secular education, as most of you do in your state, just apply it to that. This is from the fourth step of the ladder, which is the longest step in the whole ladder. It's dedicated to on obedience. He says, I have seen innocent, lovely children come to school for wisdom, education, and profit. Right? Most parents send their kids for those things. And learn only cunning and vice through the contact that they make with other students. The wise man will understand what I am saying. What a word from St. John. His experience, of course, uh, is um, of observing this, that the best intentions of parents uh, and young people are often thwarted by an ex overexposure to godlessness in our uh, schools uh, that are so debased. Uh, this is an ancient, evidently, a very uh, ancient problem, but it's in high gear today. So that's uh, just an initial word on the danger of godless schools. Parents, the fathers say, ought to be devoted to church schools, absolutely devoted to them. And I'd like to read to you uh, two beautiful quotes. These quotes are from our 20th century quotes from Father Alexander Elchininov, the author of The Diary of a Russian Priest. Remember, this is, this is coming out of the Russian Communist Revolution. And listen to what he says about uh, what parents should think about uh, education of their children. In the education of children, the most important thing is that they should see their parents leading an intense interior life. What a word. The most important thing is that children should see their parents leading an intense interior life. No matter what education we provide our children, whether we homeschool them or put them in church schools or send them to the godless public schools, what he's saying is most important is the school of the parents' example. And what parents really need to offer their kids to start is their own interior life with God. And he continues, why are childhood impressions so important? Why is it essential to fill a child's mind and soul with light and goodness, starting from the various early stages, earliest stages of life? In childhood, we find a natural gift for faith and simplicity, gentleness, a capacity for tenderness and compassion, imagination, an absence of cruelty and hardness. Now, this is precisely the kind of soil that yields a harvest 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. When later in life the soil has become hard and dry, a man can be cleansed anew and saved by the continuing presence of his childhood experience. That is why it is so important to keep children close to the church. It will provide them with nourishment for their entire lifetimes. The exposures that we tolerate of our young ones, exceedingly important and determinative for their future. Giving them a solid, loving, prayerful, prayerful Christian uh, education in our church schools, absolutely key to their happiness throughout their entire life. How do we get this done? Church schools can only exist if priests are zealously devoted to them. And now I'd like to just humbly say a word to my brother, priests, and that is it's up to us. Absolutely, it's up to us. We simply must put the establishment of 
church schools at a very high level for us. We should never rest until it's done. I'd like to use the example of uh, the great St. John of Kronstadt. There is perhaps in the history of the church no one more de dedicated to the propagation of ecclesiastical schools, of church schools, Christian education than St. John of Kronstadt. Listen to this beautiful word. word. During 32 years of his life, Father John of Kronstadt was active as a school teacher. Can you imagine? He's so famous, of course, for his daily liturgy, for his incredible preaching, for his voluminous confessional life, for his engagement in the public square, his counseling of the royal family. And look, he did this all while teaching. <laughs> 32 years he taught Bible <coughs> and other things. We priests have to be engaged uh, in education. He was an active school teacher for 32 years of his life. From 1847 onward, he taught in the district school of Kronstadt. And from 1863 to 1889, in the high school, education ought not only be simple, it also must be inseparable from character training, he says. In a certain sense, character training must predominate because the simplicity and the integrity of man is not conditioned by his reason but by his heart. Education itself, according to Father John's convictions, consists in the education of the heart. One can be a scientist, but alas, a very bad man. Were not the French revolutionaries, for example, learned men, yet they did not vivify, vividly personify, or did they not vividly personify the furies of hell? We have to educate people not only to be learned and useful members of society, but also, and this is more important and necessary, kindly, God-fearing Christians. Pray God that the sum of all acquired knowledge, a harmonious whole, may develop in the children's soul. That sound Christian system of knowledge, rules, and practice, which represents the true Christian education. But if our pupils steal hours from the divine service in order to prepare lessons which deal, strictly speaking, with secular subjects, if while in church they worry about their homework so that the divine service cannot nourish their minds and hearts, if they are bored in church, then the pedagogic work will suffer because the best education is undeniably provided by the church with its marvelous heavenly services, which penetrate right into one's inner being. In one of his addresses, he justified and explains in detail while people ought to study ancient Greek. Parents and teachers, take great care not to allow your children to display unaccountable changes in behavior in your presence. Caprice is the root of the heart's decay. What an incredible example of St. John's devotion to the propagation of church schools as basic. He considered them absolutely basic. But note the unique ecclesiastical mind, right? This is the orthodox mind. This is the true Catholic mind. Church services are at the core of true education. We don't just have orthodox education. We don't have Christian education uh, without the services this is why church schools are so important. Schools that are overseen by pastors, schools where priests and children pray to get together every day. The Orthro service, or whatever service a priest will, will pray with the kids each day, is not uh, icing on the cake. It's not a non-part of the instruction. It is the most important instruction, period, St. John says. The most important and it can be also a source of tremendous encouragement and life for all the children if the children are, are taught to chant and are taught to participate uh, in the services of the church in a, in a very key, central way, where they learn the hymns. And then that joy spills uh, into, and the singing spills into uh, all the different classes and the day. Orthros, or the church service of the church school, uh, cleanses everything away, and it sets it right. And if there was a de bad day previously, it starts the day again fresh uh, with the kingdom of God uh, invasive. This word, this beautiful word from St. John of Kronstadt about the centrality of um, priests in the church's schools and promoting the church's schools, teaching in the church's schools, leading prayer in the church's schools, this is basic. Wherever this takes place, the church will prosper. Where it does not take place, the church will not prosper. Of course, we have lots of examples, uh, not just you know late 19th century, early 20th century examples from 
St. John of Kronstadt in Russia. But uh, I'll give you two more examples, one from uh, England, from 7th century England, and then I'll give you also a one, one from, um, from Greece. This example comes from uh, the life of the great uh, first unifying Archbishop of England, St. Theodore of Canterbury, a fascinating man who was a Greek but sent to England by Rome. So here's a Greek who was living in Rome, sent from Rome to uh, England to organize and build the church. This is a word from the Venerable Bede in his Ecclesiastical History of the English People about Theodore's educational work. Listen to this. Theodore was the first archbishop whom the entire church of the English obeyed. And since, as I have observed, both he and Hadrian were men of learning, both in sacred and secular literature, they attracted a large number of students into whose minds they poured the waters of wholesome knowledge day by day. In addition to instructing them in the Holy Scriptures, that's another centrality to Christian education. Not just scriptures referenced in this great book or that great book. No, primary direct instruction in the Holy Scriptures. After the services, number two, scriptural instruction. The waters of, whole, of wholesome knowledge day by day. In, in, in addition to instructing them in the Holy Scriptures, they also taught their pupils poetry, astronomy, the calculation of the church calendar. In proof of this, some of their students, still alive today, when the Venerable Bede is writing, are as proficient in Latin and Greek as they are in their native tongue. Never had there been such happy times as these since the English settled in Britain. For the Christian kings were so strong that they daunted all the barbarous tribes. The people eagerly sought the newfound joys of the kingdom of heaven, and all who wished for instruction in the reading of the scriptures found ready teachers at hand. The knowledge of sacred music, hitherto limited to Kent, now began to spread to all the churches of the English. So here you have it. How did the English church prosper? How did Holy Orthodoxy explode under St. Theodore and afterwards? By this great devotion to Christian instruction, to Christian schools. You may be more familiar with uh, the recent saints who evangelized uh, Greece and what's now Albania and, and Macedonia, that area, like St. Cosmas Aetolos, who himself, uh, this is 18th century, right? He, he let, led this great awakening throughout uh, Orthodox lands that were being oppressed by the Muslim yoke of the Ottomans at the same time that the so-called Great Awakening in the 18th century was taking place here in America. He started 200 schools himself. And a little bit later, the great St. Makarios of Corinth, Corinth, listen to this word uh, on his commitment to schools and education. Makario saw the great importance of the school in relation to the church as St. Cosmos Aetolos did. Before he became Archbishop of Corinth, he himself volunteered to instruct the children of the Corinthians because the school of that city lacked a teacher. Can you imagine this man who would soon become Archbishop simply became the teacher? He taught for six years without salary. When he became archbishop, he decided to establish schools throughout the province of Corinth. He discharged all illiterate priests, and before ordaining new ones, he sent them to the monasteries to receive the needed education and training. Again, like Cosmos, he was keenly aware of the importance of books for the improvement of the people. This is just, dear ones, uh, the practice of devoted priests. Devoted priests in the, in the church preach and establish Christian schools. Church schools are that basic. We need to support existing church schools, and we need to plant new schools everywhere, everywhere that we can. How important is it? Well, let me end my reflection by uh, sharing the words of someone much closer to us here in America, the great St. Tikhon, the enlightener of North America, who became patriarch of Russia, and was, uh, became a confessor and a martyr under the communists. He reposed in the Lord on the feast of the Mother of God's Annunciation, March 25th, in 1925. But before that, he was the bishop and archbishop of America from 1898 to 1908. For about 10 years, uh, he was here, and he did so much for America here. He set the course uh, in so many ways for the prosperity of, of the church here in America and said a lot about education. I'd like to end... Uh, this reflection on the necessity, the absolute necessity of church schools 
uh, by quoting St. Tikhon, the Enlightener of America. This quote comes from an exhortation that he gave to a newly ordained priest. Once again, he, see, he saw uh, how important it was for the priest, for the pastor, to lead the way in this. He says, describing the relationship of uh, bishops to their diocese and pastors to their parishes, he says, uh, he, described me, he describes it in a marriage image. From now on, I devote all my strength and all my gifts to serve you. This is what he said when he became bishop here in America. And to this new priest, he said, forget yourself, Father, and fall in love with your flock. Wow. Wow. What a beautiful word. What a, a, a picture of a true pastor. Forget yourself and fall in love with your flock, which is presented to you by God to which you have become engaged today. This man was ordained and installed as a pastor of his community. And having rejected your pride, be indifferent to your personal life. Oh, how beautiful. Be indifferent to your personal life and give yourself entirely to your new calling, which is high and holy. So this is his view of the pastoral relation. And listen to what he says about this with in regard to schools and education. This comes from a uh, sermon to a new priest, newly ordained priest. This is 1900. Be quick to help and work hard to persuade all those who are cold towards their mother, the Holy Orthodox Church. Anybody you see whose heart is cold to the church, the priest is to stir them up, awaken in them devotion to the church. The foundations in some respects have already been laid there. So he's saying to this new priest, look, the church is being established. And, and the foundations of the parish are already laid, but there's other things to do, he says. The foundation, in some respects, have already been laid there. It is only necessary to strengthen and develop them. But in other areas, areas nothing has been started. What is he talking about, other areas? Nothing has been started. For instance, there is no church school there. You must see that one is organized. Wow. St. Tikhon, pray for us. You must see that one is organized. I think this is the condition uh, of our land. The condition of our land is that uh, many churches have been established. So we have, in some respects, foundations that are already laid. But in other areas, nothing has been started. For instance, there is no church school there. You must see that one gets organized. I say to you, and I do not keep silent about this in front of anyone. Get this, dear ones. That the future of orthodoxy in this land depends on church schools. And that these schools are especially crucial here in America, since in the public schools of this country, the law of God is not taught. Wow. 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 You know, this great St. Tikhon, also just before he went back to become Patriarch of Russia, 1908, when he got called back to become Archbishop and then eventually Patriarch, he summoned the first all-American council of priests and lay people, and he commissioned them to work together. He said, not just the priests, it must be the labors of the lay people, collaborating with their spiritual fathers. That is how it gets done. That is how the ministry gets done. And that is how church schools will be strengthened so that they can be firmly established, as firmly established as our parish churches are. And it's how new church schools will be established by the zealous leadership of their priests who will accept nothing less than education in the heart of God, close to God, in, in the, under the shadow of of the church, and by laity who are willing uh, to be virtuous enough to put the resources that are necessary forward to establish this for the salvation of our young people and the good of holy orthodoxy in our land. Woo! Church, schools, and the future of the church. May God help us to the glory of his name. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to announce the launch of PNP Kids, our new YouTube channel for children's content. Please join us for story time with Presbyteria Catherine as she reads Orthodox children's literature. 
We invite you also to join Father Jason each week for the Sunday Gospel and Children's Homilies. And tune in to Cloud of Witnesses, where a full cast of performers reenact the lives of the saints. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Patristic Nectar Kids, or find us via the PNP Kids podcast on your favorite podcast streaming platform. And please consider making a donation to Patristic Nectar Publications so that we may continue to offer more free content.